Good evening and welcome to the news. The headlines tonight. Surfing. Who's on board for more female participation? A new beekeeping course established at the University of Limerick and Soaring fuel prices cause anger amongst motorists. With the Russian-Ukrainian conflict causing economic instability worldwide, petrol and diesel prices have soared. More on this story from Faye and Elaine. Are rising fuel prices grinding your gears? Motorists around the country have been voicing their frustrations as the price of running their cars keeps going up. Petrol and diesel prices have increased recently, with some motorists paying up to €2 Euro a litre. Excise duties being cut have done little to lower these prices. We spoke to some Limerick motorists about this issue. And how much was it this time last year, do you know? I commute from about 10 kilometres away from Limerick. Yeah. I went and I filled up my tank there uh, Sunday night. And it was 100 quid to fill it up. Fuel prices have gone up 40% since this time last year. The price hike has especially affected taxi drivers in the city, whose livelihoods depend on the running of their vehicle. I'm a taxi driver for the last tur- 20, sorry, 32 years. I can remember about 12 months ago, maybe 18 months ago, the, um, the fuel being a euro and 19 cent. Now it's something like... 190. Last week I paid 2 euro and 14 cent for it. Yeah, we're having we're having huge problems with fuel. Um, not getting the fuel, but paying the high prices for it. it. Used to take me 60 quid, right? Now it takes 100 quid. You know, we have to absorb th- those costs ourselves. This is Fade Organ reporting live for LMK today. Surfing is Ireland's fastest growing sport. Alison Carr investigates the growing number of female surfers emerging in Ireland. Many male Irish surfers have succeeded on the international pro circuit, but why don't more women turn professional? The surfing community in Lahinch gave us their thoughts. Ex-global surfer Gillian spoke to us about her experience surfing. It's a lot of money and when you have kids it's a lot of time, you can't be going off every week. Plays a big role. You've got money to put into diapers, childcare, things like that. So it's hard to stay on the on the professional circuit. Surfer Steph Skyroski has seen a huge wave of women taking to the water. Yeah, when I arrived about 15 years ago, just on a holiday, it was rare to surf with any women in the water. And I'd say recently, it's it's unusual not to have any women in the water. Women don't appear to go on to the professional level. I asked Gillian, who surfed in Australia, if there's more equality in Ireland. I find it's a lot more equal in Ireland. In Australia, I think there's always a sexualisation of surfing, whereas in Ireland, when you're all in five little wetsuits from head to toe, you're there for the sport and you're not there to the beach. Up and coming surfer Molly talks about her love of riding waves. Amazing and peaceful and exciting and it was all around great. Would you ever imagine yourself surfing like for a job professionally? I do see that coming a dream, coming impossible, but it is unexpected who I will be in the next few years. The future of Irish surfing looks hopeful, with more females getting on boards. Alison Carr and Saoirse Hammond reporting for LMK Today. The honeybee has become an endangered species over the past few years. The University of Limerick has created a new beekeeping course aiming to educate others about the dangers associated with this decline. Christina Alcazar reports. This year at UL, the buzz is all about bees. Zoologist John Breen was stung by his passion for the little insects at a young age. At the age of eight and ten, my father bought bees. And I've been beekeeping since. Now years into his beekeeping career, the species is in danger. The short phrase for it is intensification of agriculture and the use of more pesticides. We can all keep the buzz alive, even in our own gardens. Everybody is helping. Yeah. It, people's own individual gardens are really becoming very important. 
I think we could probably survive honeybees disappearing. Yeah. The thing um, about honeybees is that you can put them into boxes. Mark's interest started in his uncle's farm. My uncle is a farmer. His neighbour actually has a beehive farm. And I was always interested in, I suppose, the process of, in terms of purchasing the, the bees and creating the honey and the whole process from start to finish. The course is very interesting, I'm learning a lot at the age that I'm at at the moment and also I have a full-time job so I don't think I'd have enough time for it at the moment but obviously who knows, um, maybe when I retire I'll have plenty of time to take it up as a hobby. That's it from Christina, Ashley and Moya. And now over to Martin at the sports desk. Thanks Mairead. First off, hurling. UL's Fresher 2 hurlers booked their place in the Fresher 2 hurling final yesterday by beating UCC 318 to 110. Limerick hurler Keane Lynch made the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Team of the Year along with six UL players in a star-studded selection. Defenders TJ Brennan and Brian O'Mara, midfielder Kieran Connolly joins forwards Mark Rogers and Mikey Keeley to make up the UL contingent. Across the pond, the Cheltenham Festival returns this afternoon for the first time since 2020. Manchester United hope to book their place in this season's UEFA Champions League quarter-finals tonight. The Red Devils will face La Liga champions Atletico Madrid at Old Trafford, where the scoreline is evenly poised at 1-1 after Anthony Alanga equalised for United in the reverse fixture last month. Our main story this afternoon. UL's fencing team are preparing for the UL Wolves IPE event happening at the UL Sports Arena on April 2nd. Brian Bailey reports. The University of Limerick is home to some of the finest fencing in Ireland. But this is fencing of a very different kind. Less posts and panels, more face guards and foils. Fencing club members were on guard to tell us more about one of UL's fastest growing sports. Our typical breakdown of a session would be that we'd start up with a warm up, jog up and down the hall, get a few stretches in, um, maybe we'll get into footwork after we've done our stretches. Our footwork would usually be just going across the hall doing advances, retreats, lunges. Um, we do like to get a bit of blade work in first. This is just regular fencing but we've got blade work going over on the other side of the hall. Once we have the advances, lunges and retreats done, um, we would get into a bit of proper blade work, proper fencing. As well as sharpening members' knowledge about fencing fundamentals, the focus now is all about the upcoming Wolves Novice Epic. We've been in diversity here in UL on the 2nd of April. It's open to basically all of Ireland. Uh, we hosted it over in the main UL hall. Uh, we're hoping to host Epe Novice. So Epe is the sport you see going on behind me. Uh, novice meaning anyone who's fencing less than two years. It's a good way for novices to get on the leaderboard without being knocked out in the first round like you'd see in a uh, Premier Tournament. So if you want to take a stab at it, make sure to get in touch with the UL Fencing Club through the UL Wolves Clubs and Societies website. This is Ryan Bailey here for LMK Today. Thanks Martin. Now over to Roisin for the five day weather forecast. Thank you, Mairead. Hi there and good afternoon. We have a yellow weather warning off the west coast this week. Southwesterly winds will reach for six or higher on Irish coast this week from Valencia to Arishead to Malinhead. That's for winds reaching between 30 and 45 kilometres per hour. So bring a jacket with you this week, folks. After a changeable week here in Limerick, our weather will remain mixed as we head into the weekend with the potential for heavy rain in some places, but also some drier and brighter weather too. Heavy rain will move into the southwest on Thursday night, becoming widespread Friday morning, which may lead to some flooding. There is also potential for heavy rain and strong winds over the weekend, with the possibility of warnings being issued. We're advising everyone to keep a close eye on the forecast for the coming days. A yellow rain warning is in place for many southern and eastern counties from 3pm this afternoon until around midnight, where heavy rain along with strong winds will bring a risk of flooding and hazardous driving conditions. Let's have a look at what's happening around the rest of the country this week. Dry on tonight with clear skies, lowest temperatures of minus one to plus three degrees, with frost forming mainly in the south and east, with southerly breezes increasing fresh to strong on Atlantic coasts later in the week. Wednesday will start dry with clouds building through the morning and rain arriving in the west by afternoon. During the afternoon and evening, rain will extend gradually eastwards. Highest temperatures of 7 to 10 degrees to light to moderate southwesterly winds. Thursday, St. Patrick's Day will be a mainly damp day with some sunshine. Expect some isolated showers early in the day. 
but afternoon temperatures of 12 or 13 degrees with light to moderate southwest breezes falling south southwest later. So don't forget your umbrella when you hit the parades. And now, folks, for the bank holiday weekend, current indications suggest that settled spells that start on Friday night will continue into the weekend with sunshine, light winds and temperatures of 13 or 14 degrees in the afternoon and clear skies at night, allowing temperatures to fall below freezing, bringing frost. And now back to you, Maraid. And finally, before we go, the headlines again. Surfing. Who's on board for more female participation? A new beekeeping course established at the University of Limerick and soaring fuel prices cause anger amongst motorists. That's all from the newsroom. From all at the LMK Today team, have a good day.